ladies and gentlemen, I present to you my video on how to root the Google Nexus 7. This is running Android 4.2.2. This toolkit that we're fixing to use is going to go through a lot of updates, like tons and tons of them. So things might change. Just pay attention to what you're doing and hopefully everything will go just fine. So you got to download the toolkit. I'll put a link to it in the description. And this is all thanks to this guy right here, Mskip. He is an awesome awesome developer that's done many many toolkits on the Note 2, the Galaxy Nexus, the S3, Nexus 4, so many different devices and makes our life so much easier. So this works on the Wi-Fi 8, 1632 and the GSM HSPA 32 gig models. Again that could change in time just know that you know what you're choosing is the right thing. So you'll scroll down here, it'll be like the toolkit right here, just click on it, it'll open up a new thing, you can download it, and you can even copy this MD5 and paste it when you run like a tool that checks your, um, your MD5. So you can click save, and you can wait for it to download, and then when it's done you can open it, and then there's this... I'm not going to go into Alan's folder. You don't need to see what's in there. <laughs> I haven't checked it even, so I don't know. Anyways, um, this toolkit supports 720p camera recording. This is awesome and amazing, and we're going to enable that. <laughs> so you download the toolkit, and basically you run through it all. Let's go ahead and cancel that since I've already saved it to my desktop. You could right-click on it. You can do send to... If you want, this is optional, uh, then paste that, compare, they're okay. I'll have a link to WinMD5Sum. It's an awesome, awesome tool. If you don't use Firefox, and you, which Firefox uh, has an add-on called Down the Mall that lets you check the MD5. And Anyway, so we're just going to double-click on it, and it's going to open up, and we're just going to click Next, 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 Next. And it's cool because you can even change that to like your flash drive or anything. So we're not going to execute the program at the moment. I'm going to take this and put it somewhere else on my second monitor. And then put this in my toolkit folder. And then open up this and find the Nexus 7 toolkit right there. Do you want to check for an update? We don't have the developer option as of this second or moment. So we are on build 422. Um, let's go. If uh, if yours isn't showing up because like we have 422 right now, then just choose the very latest option and hope it works. Uh, we're going to go to the donate project development toolkit settings and then check if auto is available. Activate donators feature. So I just enabled my donator feature because that's how you're going to get the latest update supports Android 4.2.2. We're going to go ahead and open up that toolkit again. And then instead of typing no, now we can type yes since we have the donate version. And it should find the update here shortly. And an auto update is available to download. So you'll type yes. You'll press enter and it'll, it'll start downloading it and you'll have the latest version. Okay, so the toolkit is now restarting since it's uh, updated and we should have the very latest one. Uh, whenever you update, do go ahead and type yes again just so I've had it towards it updated like an older version, but it wasn't like it didn't update the very latest one. So check that out. Look at that. Look at that. Before we only had options for 421. Now we have options for 422. So let's type in 15. Again, please keep in mind that you which one you're typing in. So this is the Wi-Fi model, 422, JD Q39. Let's go ahead and make sure that's our about phone inside uh, our Nexus 7. And my bad. It's about tablet, but yes, we are on JQ39. It actually says JDQ. Oh, okay, yeah, right there, JDQ39. Sweet, awesome. So, first of all, we need to have drivers. This thing has never once been hooked up to our computer, 
ever. So let's go ahead and do that now. First of all, I highly recommend that you enable developer options. What you will do is you will actually uh, double tap on the build, well not double tap, but tap on this a few times. It will say you are two steps away, one step away, bam, you are now a developer. So now you'll have developer options and you can go up here and you can enable USB debugging, press OK, and then bam. So now that'll work just fine. We have developer options enabled. We need to plug in our Nexus 7 now. Click here for dev drivers and installing ADB interface. Awesome. Okay, so we installed the drivers. Uh, I don't know if that's good enough right there. Actually, let's go back. We do see our number, it says offline. We'll go ahead and install the drivers they want us to install anyway. So option two, since I'm using 64-bit Windows. One, installing Windows 7, eight drivers. Operation started. Uh, yes, we want to install this driver anyway. Alrighty, sweet. So press any key to go back to the main menu. We're going to unlock the bootloader. Please, 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 please keep in mind that once you unlock the bootloader, <laughs> that's it. That is it. Like, you lose everything. I have not set up this device. I barely installed a Twitter app just because I wanted to tweet something from the Nexus 7 to see how it felt. But I've not even used this device. So now we're gonna go ahead and unlock the bootloader. Unlock number one, and when prompted, press volume up to highlight the yes, and press the power button to confirm. Is your device in fast boot? Are you ready to continue? It is not in fast boot, so I'm gonna type no, and the toolkit's gonna automatically put it into fast boot mode. This is why you need to have USB debugging enabled and check that out. Ne Google Nexus 7 bootloader interface. So volume down takes you to no, and volume up takes you to yes. It was on yes by default, but yours might not be. So we're gonna go ahead and press on that button. It says unlocking now. And then done, sweet. So we now have an unlocked bootloader. The toolkit just said, can, you know, success continued. Now we are going to go to root device. No, actually, um, let's go to one click for all. This, well, actually, we, <laughs> damn it, I did it again. Um, eight would have actually done the unlocking the bootloader and everything. So I personally prefer Super SU. I've been rooting Android phones since late 2009. So Super User has been a pretty big, uh, part of Android, but I really like Chainfire. I use a lot of his apps. So my personal preference is to go ahead and use that. Twerp, I highly, see, even the developer put recommended. I highly recommend Twerp. I'm gonna do a separate video on this, but if you have a eight or 16 gig next to seven, you're gonna want to take your backups and put them on a flash drive. You will be able to do that if you have Twerp recovery and it's touchscreen and it's awesome, and you can easily update it using Goo Manager. And uh, Raw Manager actually now supports uh, Torp Recovery. So let's go ahead and type number two, which I highly recommend doing. It's your choice whether you use Super SU or Super User, but I highly recommend going with option two. So it says, is the device in fast boot? Why? Yes, it sure is. If it's not, press no, it'll reboot you into fast boot. Press enter. Have you already unlocked your bootloader? This is where you can say yes, and it does load what the other screen did, or you can type in no, or or no, and it'll load what the other screen did. And in this situation, we're already unlocked, so yes. Booting into Android using an insecure boot image. Now it's gonna be waiting for the device. This toolkit is freaking amazing. Like, I can run ADB commands, follow instructions, and do most things myself, 
but regardless, this toolkit makes this just so freaking easy and simple, and it walks you through how to do it, and yeah, if you have not donated to the developer, I highly, highly recommend doing so. As you saw, I wouldn't have been able to root my device today, but I have the donator, uh, I've donated before, and I'll donate again. This toolkit's amazing, and freaking, <laughs> if you donate, you get all the latest updates, like me. As of like yesterday, I believe, or the day before, really recently, he added support for Android 4.2.2, and what am I doing? I'm rooting Android 4.2.2. If I didn't donate, I wouldn't be able to do that. So, donate the mskip, there's an option inside the toolkit, after you choose your device, and you'll be able to be just like me, and you'll be able to, if um, Android 4, uh, whatever they're gonna call the next one, like Android 4.3 or whatever, he'll update the toolkit shortly after that comes out, and you'll be able to root it if you donated. If you didn't donate, you won't be able to. It's that simple. What that's probably meaning is, who knows? So, <laughs> let's go over to the device. I'm not gonna sign in or anything, because this is not my device. I'm gonna, I'm gonna log into my router, but whatever. No, I'll let her sign into her Google account. This is my wife's tablet. I'm getting myself the refreshed 1080p version later this year when it comes out, as well as the quad-core Nexus 10 that comes out later this year, or in the middle of the year or whatever. So I'll have the refreshed Nexus 7 with the 1080p screen, and hopefully they'll put 2 gigs of RAM in it, and I'll have the updated quad-core Nexus 10. So we're going to unplug it. We're going to go on swipe down this side, go to settings. Go see, no developer options, about tablet. Da -da 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 Bam. And then there's developer options. And then USB debugging. Okay. Plug back in the tablet. This must be a new thing with Android 4.2.2. But yeah. Come on, screen. Go back to the. There we go. So... I might have screwed something up. <laughs> oh, okay. Don't unplug your device while doing all that. I thought I'd have to go in there and enable developer options, but it didn't even tell me to do that, but I did it anyway, so shame on me. Now it's flashing the recovery and super user method that we chose. Mm -hmm. This will be part three of the video. Since I screwed up, I'm gonna go ahead and do that again. Uh, no, oh, one click for all, super SU, twerp recovery, type in no to go into fast boot, and then don't unplug your device like I did. Please don't do that. This would have been just fine, but as you saw, some things aired out, and that's what happens when you unplug your device. Yes. See, at this point, do not unplug your device. Don't do it. Freaking, I thought I had to go in there and unplug it, enable developer options, and plug it back in. But as you see, no errors. Everything is just freaking fine and dandy. And see, it, it failed that time because I just did this you know, a second ago. And look, nothing is erroring out. Everything is just fine. <laughs> Don't unplug your device like I did. <laughs> uh. Bought this tablet yesterday, less than 24 hours ago. And here we are with a rooted custom recovery, freaking tricked out Nexus 7. I will be doing videos on Scientron 10.1, on AOKP Jelly Bean, on you know, major ROMs, this is not my device, it's my wife's, like I've said, I'm going to get the 
quad core Nexus 10 when it comes out and the 1080p Nexus 7 when it comes out. So yeah, if this video helped you root your Nexus 7, please give this video a thumbs up. It takes just a second to click the like button and let me know that you enjoyed the video and it encourages me to keep doing what I'm doing. If you're new to my channel, please consider clicking the subscribe button on the bottom left. I'll also put a link in the description. It'll notify you when I post my videos on installing custom ROMs, on the new Nexus 10, the new Nexus 7, and future devices like the Note 3 and the S4, which will all get supported by Mskip's toolkits. If you haven't donated, I highly recommend doing so. It's option 29 in the toolkit as of the moment. Again, please give this video a thumbs up. Please subscribe. This is what would Josh do, and I'm out. Before we go, I do want to show you one thing. If you go to here, you'll see that we have Super SU. And yeah. Also, uh, if you go to recovery, which I'm trying to think the easiest way to do that, probably to just power down. Hold the uh, volume up and power button for a few seconds. There we go. I don't know if that was all three. I I think you gotta hold all three, but I held up and it wasn't doing anything, so I went ahead and pressed down as well. If I go down here to restart bootloader, recovery, press power, and we should see the good old touchscreen twerp recovery. Literally the best custom recovery out there that gets updated very frequently to support new features. And at this point, before you do anything, I highly recommend going to backup and choosing system data boot enable compression and if you have a external uh, card I'll show you if you have one of these little OTG cables and a little flash drive just plug it in and then you'll be able to press on the little use external SD card and see it says 11 gigs of or 1 gig available uh, if I put in a card this card's almost full and it's a 16 gig but you get the idea. If you have a 32 gig uh, card or a 64, it even supports EXFAT. So if you have a card like this, which is 64 gigs, go ahead and reboot back into recovery. See, it says right here that our bootloader is unlocked. So we'll go ahead and plug in this 64 gig flash drive which is formatted as EXFAT and we'll go to backup and use external SD and it's not wanting to let me choose it but you get the idea I don't know why it's not working at the moment but anyways yeah that's about it videos over I promise this is what would Josh do and I'm finally out